for youngsters to look at what happens around us and try to make an understanding just to give you some glimpse of when i grew up as a child we had a tiled house and then you like probably many of uh, your parents or grandparents might tell you that in old houses in the tiles there'll always be one hole and then during sunlit period through that hole one shaft of light will get in so you close all the windows the room becomes very dark and using that shaft of light and a mirror you can reflect onto a wall or you take a dhoti and then put it white dhoti and then in the path you take a transparent sheet write something so it becomes a good projection you can imagine this we were doing in the 60s and that was much before overhead projectors came and all that and my brother he was little more in innovative see probably many of you would have done taking a book and flipping the page and write the hangman and then you start seeing it moving its hand up and down so what my brother had done is in that projection a small reel and then he will move it by hand so what you are seeing is almost like a projector creating a thing so you can see what is involved in this is very simple you are not buying lot of things and but what is available to you as sunlight and some simple concept of a mirror etc in a similar way when i was also a kid i went i went to one of the mats the swami of the mat took from his drawer a view master probably today 3d imaging you would have seen again if you go back uh, 60s etc it was a great thing when you look at a view master you can see an object in three dimension so the and of course that three dimensional object if you look at later in my career we built cameras from satellite we generated the digital elevation model not only of our country but for the entire globe but the point i was just trying to tell you is that nature provides us so much of an opportunity to learn things and if probably what you have seen here itself what ispf has shown that there are so many concepts which are so easily seen around in nature and then every individual if you look at as a child what we are told is the ability of that child is so enormous and today as more and more of uh, science and technology is coming we appreciate how things are happening again i'll just maybe just give you a couple of examples probably many of you would have heard people talking about telepathy and all that that means you can communicate with each other without actually seeing etc but today suppose i were to tell you you have got two mobiles all of you know how the two mobiles interact with each other these are two gadgets one sends a signal into the atmosphere and another picks it up and there is a receivers in that so these two gadgets are communicating with each other not only they communicate with each other they also communicate with cloud where you can store the information now we all know human beings are much more evolved gadgets than what we th- see what robots we build etc so now if you just think is it possible that human beings also can send some signals and then another human being who has made a appropriate receiving mechanism receive what you are sending so at least you will think that there is a possibility today because you are seeing the gadgets doing all that so similarly if you look at the thing the human capability itself even as a child grows today we are all familiar artificial intelligence does lots of things and it is doing so much that it's sometimes actually unnerving but we anyway, will not get into that part but if you look at how a child as it grows his or her ability to influence her own or his own system and make that system more and more efficient and more and more proficient see today probably if you many of you who may be knowing about artificial intelligence know that how it works is there is a lot of uh, inputs there is a processing a modeling system which comes up with a model and based on that model it produce matches the results and every time the result matching happens 
the model becomes stronger and stronger and it becomes efficient now why am i telling about this suppose you look at as a human being what we do we encounter some situation at that time what our system which is running us what it does is it will look for any equivalent situation that has occurred in your life earlier so it brings that so you had such and such an event at that time you dealt with it in this manner so if the situation is equivalent you will follow that solution and successfully encounter that now suppose you keep doing and you have encountered a situation which you have not seen in your life in the past so what do you think your system will do it will try and find give you a new solution but if you are careful and if you are ready to take risk you will adopt that and try it out so if you keep doing that maybe out of 10 times you may succeed in 6 or 7 times but there are also others who dismiss this saying that this is no use for me now what the artificial intelligence is doing is every time it succeeds it gives a feedback to the system so now you are doing the right job now you take these two individuals one who accepted and followed another who is rejecting now in whom do you think the system which is operating will continue to provide for future the person who is rejecting the system decides okay there is no use for giving him a new solution he stops that whereas for the other person he provides so what i am trying to just impress upon is that each one of us come with many sensory inputs our system which is perceiving has a tremendous capability it analyzes not only it takes inputs from what we have experienced from our life but also what comes to us from our genetic path or probably we have access to even something outside us like cloud what the miles see in clouds so if you look at the child as the child grows what is it how does this system run probably if you look at a robot you are designing a robot you are asked to design a robot so what you will do you will design a robot for a specific function so you have a set of actuators maybe hands moving leg moving around so you have put a set of instructions and then based on the instructions you have given it will pick up a glass and come and deliver maybe you have heard of uh, medicines being given during covid time to a place where human beings don't want to move etc but something is picked up and given now you want to build more and more capability so you put more functions more memory more actuators like that you keep building more and more capability but then in this whatever design you have done for that robot is all what you have decided but slowly you will start finding it's inadequate what you have done and you also want to make sure that the robot survives it survives the environment it gets so normally what we would have done we would have told the robot if you encounter a situation like this report to me i am the designer so i'll give you the solution so now normally what happens if there is sufficient time for this process of reporting the problem and correcting is available robot will survive but suppose the time available is inadequate by the time it reports the problem and gets the correction it is destroyed so now you have to start building more intelligence into that how do we know because when we want to go to mars and put robots there and the robots have to survive you also are familiar we told it takes half an hour for the signal to go from earth to reach mars it has to come back that means till half an hour if it cannot survive something has happened to the robot and it has died so we want to give capability so we start building intelligence into that more and more so it learns about its problems how to tackle that it goes on anyway the point i just wanted to make uh, for the simple thing is each individual or a child has this inbuilt system which is probably designed in such a way that the most dominant capability of that is to ensure the survival of the individual and then it also has tremendous opportunity to learn new things and modify itself as a highly advanced artificial intelligence system so today when children are exposed to newer and newer things 
this whole process becomes better. And so far what scientists, technologists, etc. have done in this world is nothing but looking at what is happening in the nature and trying to convert it into very specific gadgets which have outperformed what we have seen in nature in some way, but not with the efficiency with which the nature is doing. Probably many of you would have been told that human being requires today between 20 to 40 watts of energy for doing what all he is doing. But then any robot, if you want to make do anything remotely like a human being, we need probably gigawatts of energy and such things. And also if you just look at, we were talking about designing robots. If you are told, design a robot or a vehicle which can reproduce itself by picking up material from its surroundings. So it looks so, actually you can say, very amazing capability. But if you just look around, all life forms what we see, are they not doing that? Every life form picks up material from its surrounding, what we can call as Panchabhutas, for example, from the same soil, earth, water, air, then it is converting it into another life form and going ahead. So today already people are looking at how bio and uh, electronics can be brought together, human machine interface. So the things are moving at a very fast pace. So the children have tremendous capability and if they can understand what is the potential that is there in them, how they can actually not only look at the world but also enhance their own system which is running them, how they can influence it and how they can make it more and more capable than we would have done our job, whatever efforts are being done here or in any other way, every individual, every child has so much potential and events like this, I am sure, is definitely a trigger. And if you look at what Raman himself showed, in fact, it's an amazing capability just by picking up sunlight and a set of filters, he came up with the complete understanding of the Raman effect. No big gadgets, no lot of money spent, but all his intellectual capability and simple tools available in nature. So that's where the, this is the real problem for India. Today, if we have to follow what advanced countries have done, we will be always behind because the technology which is the driver, if everything has to come through technology, the new technologies are not easy to make. But if we can make use of what is accessible to us and use our intellectual capability, we can go ahead. And this is what India has shown so far, whether it is in COVID time or ISRO has shown in terms of the over last many decades. In all this, the, or even the, our uh, software companies, or fintech, in all of that, India has shown that it is capable of dealing with this problem. So our next generation has a tremendous opportunity. The situation is improving. We have already become the fifth largest economy and very soon things are moving towards how to become the first. If that has to happen, it is the next generation which has to really make it happen. And events like this, where you are able to trigger the thought processes of the individual and then make them realize they have such tremendous potential that they can outbeat anybody in the world. And not only that, the basic concept ethos of this land where every human being is not a separate individual. It's part of this universe. It's part of this planet. If we understand that, I think we are truly going to regain what was millennia back the world new of India. So let me take this opportunity to compliment ISPF and also Raman Institute for bringing together children, showcasing to them some of the events and through that process energizing them and also if they learn to understand themselves as an individual and their capability I think the whole process would have done its job. Thank you very much. Wish each one of the students and who have participated a great future. Thank you.